Hello, hello, hello. Today we're going to paint a, just a cute little fall hedgehog with a few mushrooms, some ferns. I'm going to show you my techniques and step by step how I do it. This is the cutest thing. If we haven't met, I'm Viv. Welcome to Art with Viv. And let's just jump right in. Now, the first thing I did is I put down my mask, I sketched it out first, put down my masking fluid let that masking fluid dry completely and I put it over the foliage and some of the dots the parts that I wanted to stay white some of the dots in the mushrooms now I am just wetting that background with some clean water and I'm taking some nice dark blues and I am going to go ahead and just drop that in the wet background I'm mixing up two different darker blues just to get what I really want and then I'm dropping it right into that wet background, going right over the dry masking fluid. Masking fluid is your friend. It's what saves the white of the paper. And also if I had painted this blue first and then tried to paint the green of the ferns over it, the green wouldn't show up because watercolor doesn't work that way. You cannot paint light over green, so you must save the white of your paper. And I chose to use some liquid masking fluid. I painted that on first, let it dry, and now I've wet the paper and I am just dropping my blue into that wet background. It's just clean water. I'm doing a little section at a time. Now I'm gonna re-wet this top part, put some more blue in here. I didn't wet it all the way to the side. You have to work fast. You want to keep those edges wet so that you won't have a hard edge. Also notice that down in that corner, I put a little extra pigment, a little extra paint, so it looks darker down there toward the mushrooms underneath. And um, I, just, that, I just think it would be darker there because the mushrooms would be casting some shadows. So once you get that, all painted in with your nice dark blue let it dry completely before you go on to the next step now if you don't know I have an Instagram uh, art with Viv so follow me over there on Instagram now I've mixed a brown and a blue to get a black and I don't know if you can tell from the film from the video but there is a white dot of masking fluid a little dot right there in the center and that's going to be the highlight of the eye so I took a detail brush and I painted in that dark area of the eye and I did something I don't normally do. I mixed a little bit of white gouache with a nice sort of creamy yellow color to get more of a tan, a really pale buttery yellow color. And it's a little bit more um, opaque. It's not as translucent because I put that white gouache in there. I mixed it with a little bit of white gouache but I just wanted to get that lighter color and I wanted it also to be just a little bit creamier than just normal transparent watercolor. So this is really more of a mixed media, but it's still a water media. It's all water media. Gouache is considered a water media. It's just an opaque water media, not transparent like watercolor. So now I've taken some darker browns, put the shadows in right where his little eyebrow or his little his little brow shades that eye also under his chin we're putting a little shadow and down his chest even though his chest is kind of white almost white I'm just using a little bit of brown for the shadows just because it's my painting and I feel like it you could use a little blue later on I will use a little bit of blue but I'm just putting in the darkest areas of his chest with that sort of watered, real watery brown. I'm gonna to continue to sort of blend that out across his chest. His chest is in the shadow of his chin and his head, so it's not real light. There is a little backlighting come from him, coming from him, so right around the edge of his chest is some white fur that's sort of poking out there. So now I've gotten a little bit of a darker brown and I'm doing his underneath his little chin it's a little darker brown and that is coming from the reference photo also got a little darker brown where his nostril is you can see that little round dot and painting his nose with that deep deeper brown 
Now I'm just coming back in here with an even darker brown. I've got it mixed with a little tiny bit of blue. It's still brown, but with a little tiny bit of blue. And I'm putting that real, real dark shadow in that's going right under his little brow bone. That's what I'm calling it. It may not be a brow bone. It might just be where all that, those quills are on top of his head is shadowing his eye, but we're getting it in there. That's all that matters. We are getting it in there. And another little shadow across the bridge of his snout going up into his forehead a little bit that area is going to be white quills I don't know what is going on with my camera I'm gonna to have to reset the focus on it for the next video because this focus is following my hand and not the actual artwork and I forget that sometimes when you turn your camera off you have to reset it when you turn it back on or at least these that I use anyway I'm taking some of that creamy sort of buttery yellow that I've mixed with a little bit of white gouache. I'm blending into that darker brown, going right over those ferns that are covered with the masking fluid. And just blending that in really nicely, adding a little bit of more brown paint where I want it to be a bit darker, where those ferns are shadowing his fur. And adding a little, even a little bit more darker brown in some of those areas, just for some more contrast and a little bit of deeper shadows. And now I, his chest is turning from sort of a creamy white to more of a white white here on the edge. So instead of the brown for shadows, I'm just going in there with a little bit of really watery blue mix here. That same mix that we used for the background. We don't have to make it complicated. You don't have to introduce any more colors. We'll just use what we already have on the palette. The only time I think we're going to introduce a new color is when we go with the ferns and the red mushrooms, of course. But for, but for our little hedgehog here, he's such a sweetie pie. We are just using the colors we already have mixed. Now I just went with a little brown and blue and watered it down to make a gray for his little ear here. And of course the entrance to his ear, his little ear hole is really dark. So I just dropped more pigment in there even while it was still wet. And just so it would have soft edges, I'm coming in with a little bit of a medium brown here and just doing the shadow under his cheek there. I'm also just taking some clean water right now and blending out a little bit of that blue that I put down. It's not completely dry. So what that does is it just softens those lines so that they're not quite so distinct and harsh. We don't want distinct and harsh right now. So that's all we're doing. Just sort of blending things up and getting down our patterns and our of our shadows and some of our initial base colors. Now I have went to a much darker brown and I'm just doing brush strokes. I'm making little ticks, little fat brush strokes, overlapping them, putting some side by side, letting a little bit of white show through so that once this dries and we come over it with another color, which we will, it will have some lights and darks. So we'll let this darker dry after we get it all down in there. So I'm just doing random strokes. I'm trying to follow the way that his quills, I think hedgehogs have quills, fur, whatever it is. We are gonna just go in that direction and just keep on with those in the same direction it's growing in nature. That's how you want your brush strokes to go. Now on the top of his little crown here, on his little head, of course they're coming away from his face and they're going sort of straight up and down. So that's where how we do it there. That's how it's growing naturally there, but down it's his back, it's going toward his rear. That's how the strokes go. So that's all we're doing is we're just trying to follow the natural pattern of his fur or quills or whatever. Now I'm darkening up that shadow right around his eye a little bit more. I'm gonna darken up his little nose. He's got the cutest little nose. Hedgehogs have the cutest little noses. So I'm just darkening that up to give it a little separation from his snout so that you can tell the difference between what is his snout and what is his actual little nosy. And a little shadow on his upper snout and across his little cheeks there. And then just blending it out with some clean water. Easy peasy, there's nothing to this. I'm gonna add another shadow under his chin with a little watery dark brown. Just make sure you have plenty of water in it. And I'm gonna add a little bit of line work right down that 
bluish area that we made earlier. So now I'm going back into where I did that dark color for his eye. It's a black mixture. You can use black out of the tube if you'd like. Um, I'm using a really dark brown and a really dark blue mixture to make a dark and I am using it as black and I'm just doing like the tips of his little quills some of the tips of his quills are almost black so I'm just going in and putting that in there and we're gonna let that dry once we get that all done and I'm just randomly doing the tips I'm making sure I'm not covering up the whole quill I'm just doing the black at the tips and I'm just randomly working my way around I think that's a little too dark so I'm just dabbing that up I wanted to put some more line work there but that was just a little too dark so I'm going to get the watery mixture has a little more water and come back with really faint line work there it's just little fur lines that's what I'm trying to do and add just a little bit of shadow there that's all nothing too complicated nothing you can't do this is not it looks a little complicated but this is not really that complicated if you just break it down step by step shape by shape shadow by shadow once you get these initial washes in we are going to let this dry completely before we go on to the next step and i'm i am going to just let it dry i'm done with that for right now letting it dry and then we are going to come back and while that is drying a little bit more I want to make sure it's completely dry I've just got a nice bright red and I'm gonna go and paint in these mushrooms caps and now that I've painted the red over it you can really see that masking fluid shining through but later on we will remove that and I am going with a little bit of a darker red right on the edges so that it gives it a little bit of three-dimensional look it's darker on the edges lighter in the middle and we're just going to continue to do that with these mushrooms I am wetting them first and then just dropping in that really bright red and I'm leaving a little lighter toward the center of the mushroom and then I'm going to get a deeper red and just go on those very edges like the sides and that makes it look like it is it's a, it's a rounded shape and that's all you do for the mushrooms. You're just wetting them, dropping in a nice bright red, trying to leave it a little bit lighter toward the center, a little bit darker on the edges and around the bottom edge. And that's all there is to it. I've also, I also lifted a little bit of that color up off of that one. I decided this needs a little bit darker, so we're going a little, even a little bit darker with that red into some of those shadows. And that really makes it pop and gives it us a nice dimension. So we're just going to continue with that and get those mushrooms painted nicely. And once you get those tops to your mushrooms painted, I'm adding more white gouache to that golden yellow, that buttery yellow. And that is going to be the underside and the little stems. That's what I'm using to paint those. It's a little bit more opaque, but it is so creamy. I like the creamy color of it. So that's all I'm going to do there. That's going to be our base coat, our base color for those undersides and little mushroom stems. And I'm just kind of, I'm not really taking a lot of time. I'm just trying to stay within the lines and just painting it on there any willy-nilly straight onto dry paper. I didn't even wet it first. Now I'm getting a little bit of tube black because I really want this to be dark. And I'm taking my detail brush. I'm just doing tiny dots because the, the fur on, I was going to say the hair, but the fur on his ear is really a lot shorter than those long quills and the long fur down his chest. So to indicate that it's short and plus to give it some texture, I'm just doing tiny little stippling dots 
and I'm doing them closer together where I want the shadows to be, wider apart where the ear is lighter, but just tiny dots just to indicate that fur. It's all an illusion. That's all we're doing. Now, next, we're going to let that dry. Once you get that done, we're going to let it dry well. And now it is time to remove all of the masking fluid. We have gotten all of the background parts painted. So now we can uncover all of the masked parts. That's the foliage and the little dots on the mushrooms. And his little eye highlight. I've also removed that. So we'll get all that done. And then once that is all done, oh my goodness, we are going to get a nice light yellow green. And I'm just going to paint in those ferns. And it's not, I'm not even taking, I'm not trying to do like a leaf by leaf. I am just slapping that paint in that white spot, going back, getting a little medium green while that yellow green is still wet, dropping it in there. And I'm just letting the water do the work for me. There's some lighter green and some darker green areas that makes it look a little bit more realistic and gives it a lot more interest. So that's all I'm going to do for each one of these ferns. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of the lighter green, come back in with some medium green, and maybe even a little bit of darker green toward the center part. Just depends. And that's how we're going to handle that. It's the same technique for every single fern. So once you just get it once, it, that's it. That's all you're doing. You're just dropping in the light yellow green and then dropping in some medium green, some dark green. No big deal. And try to remember to get it a little darker toward the center because that's where it is going to be the darkest in nature because of that stem going down the center. It'll be a little bit darker just toward the center, lighter out toward the edges of those little leafets. So that's how you're going to handle that. Now we've got all of, through the magic, we've got all of the green fronds painted. So now I'm taking a darker brown and a tiny detail brush and I am going over the uh, darker shadows on the mushroom stems and the underneath part of the mushrooms and I've painted some little lines that's all you got to do it's not really hard um, you don't even have to do this part you could probably leave them like they are but I'm going in with a little detailed brush just to put in those lines and shadows and give it some texture and to make it have lights and darks makes it more dynamic you want to get the lights and the darks in there if you can now I am taking a medium brown and it's got a little bit more of a sienna tone to it and I'm painting over his fur in the back or quills, whatever you want to call them. Paint right over those. And they have dried completely, but once you paint over those with another color, it does actually soften those quills underneath so they're not just sitting right on top of the paper. It pushes that paint down into the paper and softens the edges a little bit. And that's what I'm, I'm pretty much going for. I'm doing a little bit of a darker brown where there are some shadows, where the mushrooms are making shadows onto his fur and as well as the ferns are making shadows and his little head is all tilted back so we got to get some darker areas in there and as you see he sort of has a white halo around his silhouette that's because he's got just a little bit of backlighting back there and it's making his fur that's around his edges really light colored now I am just going to add a little bit more color down his chin going into that darker brown and I'm using my tiny detail brush with this I'm just going to add a little bit more of a darker shadow and then just take clean water, blend it out, blend it up and out, even put a little bit over that little nose put, and that makes that nose go just even a tiny bit darker. And I've picked up some of my tube black and just drop that into the nose to make sure that that nose and that upper lip are separated and you can tell that, you know, one's a nose and one's a lip. I'm just adding some more darker shadows under his chin. He's got his little chin raised up, looking at the sky. He's probably making wishes. Who knows what he's doing? But he is definitely stargazing or sun gazing. But I think this is more toward dusk. 
and I think the stars are coming out and he is gazing at them. Now I'm just doing with a darker brown a little bit more line work, a little bit more fur. I'm trying to just paint that in little chunks and I want the chunks to match the sections of shadows. So that's all I'm doing is where it's darker I'm just painting in more of the brown in those little sections in those little shadow sections just to deepen it up give it a little bit more interest and make it be more 3d again you it, it, you, you almost can't go wrong on it's your painting you paint it the way you want to and if somebody hasn't told you today you are doing a great job so there you are doing a great job and I am proud of you now just keep adding in those shadows here and there down here I'm just going to add a little bit more of the darker brown we need a little more darker brown there right down to the tape the edge of the tape underneath that mushroom he's really starting to come alive now he's starting to look like a nice little hedgehog yeah he's looking more realistic we're not going for hyper realistic but we are just trying to make him look like a hedgehog and right now what I'm doing is I'm taking my tiny detail brush and I'm adding little tiny blue shadows on those white dots on the mushrooms. If you've ever looked at those mushrooms with the white dots, they're not actually dots. They're like little flakes or I don't even know what exactly how to describe them, but they leave a shadow on the surface of the surface of the mushroom. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just putting tiny little marks in for the shadows. Again, gives a little bit more depth, a little bit more realism even though we're going for more illustration. Now I'm going into my tube black and I am painting in the very tips of these quills where it's really dark on the hedgehog. I think we're gonna name him Herman. Herman has some really dark areas that are look almost black so that's why I am going into that black paint and that's a black tube paint straight from the tube it's not a mixture it's not my brown and blue mixture because I almost want this to look a little flat and tube blacks do have a tendency to look just a little bit flat out of the tube but it's okay because that is actually what I am going for so we're just going to get those all painted in and that again gives it another layer another texture dimension it's really nice so I really like that I like that black on there and then once we get through with this we'll get it all in there everywhere we want it and I'm even putting a little bit more black where there'd be some darker shadows I'm going to go ahead and add a little black to his eyes so that there will be more of a shadow look and I'm taking a little bit of clean water and in that a highlight I just took some clean water and sort of brushed it over the highlight and that caused some of that color to go into the highlight so that the highlight is not so stark white because the highlight in this eye is not completely white so I didn't want it to be so all I did was added a little bit of clean water brushed it over and that color reactivated around the edges and caused it to look like a really pale gray so that's all there is to that now let's let this dry completely before we move to our next step which is I'm getting my Posca pen I'm getting a white Posca pen and I am going to I think I am let me decide yeah white Posca pen and then I'm just going to start doing little tiny hairs now pos this Posca pen is acrylic paint still considered a water media but we can pretty much safely say this is a mixed media piece because we've used acrylic we've used wash we've used watercolor so i'm i'm pretty satisfied it's a mixed media um, if you don't have a, po a white posca pen you could use a white gel pen or you could use wash you know wash white wash and a brush but i'm using my posca pen it's easier for me to handle and I am just doing tiny little white markings all over wherever there are some highlights I'm just drawing those in and I really like the way it looks it really makes it look even more like fur putting this white lines on top of that darker shadow it really brings it out as f looking like fur so I'm, I'm really pleased that I decided to use my pot usually I would not use a Posca pen I would not use all these different um, elements together on the, the acrylic the gouache and the watercolor but I'm beginning to branch out and get a little bit more mixed media so we are just doing those little highlights 
he is starting to look like a real live hedgehog our little Herman Henry whatever we wanted to name him I am getting in those white marks those white quills and I really like how it's coming out so I hope you are enjoying this and I hope that you give me a thumbs up give me a comment tell me what you'd like to see me paint next and I'm also adding a little white highlights onto the mushrooms here and there. But let me know in the comments what you'd like me to see me paint next. Share this with a friend if you think somebody would get something out of it and enjoy it. And there you go. We have the cutest little fall hedgehog. Just so cute. Alright. Please consider subscribing. Giving, giving me a like. Subbing up. Doing all the things. And sharing it with a friend. I will see you soon.